All right, so there has been and always will be talk online about new cameras. And of course, the new Fujifilm X100 Mark VI was just announced. And there seems to be a new camera coming out every other month. But the chances are that the camera you're holding right now in your hands watching this video is good enough. And I have something that can make it even better. These are the Moment T-Series lenses, and they solve a big problem that the iPhone has currently. My iPhone 15 Pro Max has three lenses on it, a 48 megapixel, 24 millimeter F1.8 main camera, which is the best one. <laughs> also a 12 megapixel, 120 millimeter F2.8 telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel, 13 millimeter F2.2 ultra wide lens. And the iPhone can also artificially shoot in different focal lengths with a digital crop, adding a 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, and 50 millimeter. While it's nice to have those digital crops in camera, you don't get all of the other characteristics of using a dedicated lens in front of that sensor. And speaking of sensors, here's the problem that lies within the iPhone's cameras, 48, 12, and 12. Like I said, the best lens on the iPhone is the main one, which is the 48 megapixel, and you lose a considerable amount of resolution when you switch to the telephoto or ultra wide, but that's all solved with this new T-Series lens set for Moment. We've already talked in full depth about how capable these new phones are as far as being creative tools and how they can even replace your dedicated cameras in certain use cases. These lenses are an investment in the future of using your phone as a creative tool, and I only really recommend them if you want to seriously elevate your mobile photography and video. My first impression when holding these lenses is the fact that they are built extremely well. There is a good amount of weight being that they have added more glass elements and it also has a full metal housing. You realize that you've gotten your money's worth the instant you unbox the T-Series lenses. Now using third-party lenses on smartphones isn't a new concept at all and I've actually covered the OG Moment lenses on this channel several years ago and these T-Series lenses have made huge upgrades from back when I used those lenses, like I said, like five or six years ago at this point. These new lenses are actually tailor-made to work with these new modern smartphone cameras that have high resolution sensors and fast apertures, providing more clarity edge to edge. And oddly enough, the weather in Southern California right now has been rainy and gloomy. So I figured I would take this opportunity since we don't get much rain to begin with, to go out and chase some water reflections and do some nighttime photography using these new lenses and my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, of course the rain is unpredictable and this was an impromptu shoot. So I just figured I'd walk around and see what I could find. Let me know what you guys think about these images, pay attention to the clarity, of course, the edge to edge sharpness of these lenses, depth of field and bokeh. And for a second, I want you to imagine that I never told you that these came from a smartphone camera. Would you think that they came from like an X100 Mark VI or a small dedicated camera like a Ricoh or any other camera out there that you would take around with you for street photography? Honestly, let me know how good or bad these images are in your opinion. I personally think that these photos look amazing. Of course, I did edit them a little bit in post, but I think I was able to capture some really cool, interesting angles and perspectives. And I think the image was sharp overall. Like I said, after using those OG moment lenses in the past, there was always like a, a weird blur vignette. It, it added a little bit of character to your image images, um, but these ones are just sharp edge to edge. These Moment T-Series lenses definitely help you capture moments. And if you've made it this far into the video, one thing that I would like to capture is your uh, subscription. Yeah, definitely subscribe to the channel, it's free. I promise you there's no fee involved. Um, <laughs> subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the like, comment, all that good stuff, you know, the YouTube stuff. But let's get back to the video. Now, like I said, third-party lenses being added to your phone is not a new concept, but with these phones becoming more and more capable, it revitalizes the use case for these lenses, in my opinion. And now if someone asks me what camera would I recommend for starting YouTube or social media content creation, the answer can, honestly be your phone. And of course, not just your phone, you can add these lenses. You can add an SSD for external media capture. Uh, you have things like ProRes, you have uh, Apple Log on your phone now. Um, you can really truly build out a kit for much less than the price of a dedicated camera. Now, of course, there are more benefits to having a dedicated full frame or APS-C sensor camera that your phone can't compete with, but your iPhone does offer a compelling alternative with its own set of benefits like portability and ease of use, just to name a couple that your camera can't really compete with. Now, aside from these lenses, there's another creative tool that I recommend that fixes a huge issue on the iPhone that we actually recently talked about in my last video when it comes to AI, and that's from this video sponsor, Skylum. They make this really powerful program called Luminar Neo, which is an image editor based heavily on AI. This is far from just another photo editing application. Of course, I'm well versed in using things like Lightroom, other photo editing apps out there. And this has all of what those apps have and then much more. Like you can, of course, 
adjust, you know, dehaze and shadows and lighting and color, you know, like a normal photo editor. But when it comes to the AI stuff, it's crazy. Like I'm gonna show you some before and afters of photos that I've edited, you know, just in Lightroom versus photos that I've edited with Luminar Neo. Things like Gen Erase, Gen Expand, Gen Swap, Sky Replacements, Enhancements, Relighting, you can erase objects, you can have super contrast, you can add sun rays, atmosphere like fog and haze, you can have a neon glow, studio lighting, you can have AI face editing features. <laughs> There's like so much to this application that you can use to your advantage to really transform your images into something special. Being a photographer, of course, using film and digital, I do of course value the the, the magic and capturing the moment as it is. But then for professional commercial work, anything else where you're editing stuff for a client, it's nice to be able to give it a punch up. And in my opinion, AI is really expanding the possibilities for what we can do in post-production. And also just using it on past photos that I've taken on my trip to Mexico when we were taking hot air balloons, I was able to do an amazing sky replacement, change the mood and lighting and overall color scheme of this image to make it look way more dramatic. And this was actually at sunrise and I made it look like it was at sunset. Set. Using AI in this way as an additive to your creative workflow is a very useful tool and I was genuinely impressed with its capabilities. Skylum actually has a ton of discounts and promotions running right now and you can actually use code FRESH10 if you want to get an additional 10% discount on annual pro, explorer, or lifetime subscriptions. I'll leave all the links of course down below in the description. In 2024, there really are no excuses. The barrier of entry when it comes to content creation or just being creative and you know capturing photos and video is so low at this point. Like anyone can get in. I mean, if you just buy a phone, if you own a phone, you're in already. And I think with tools like the Moment T-Series lenses, these rigs and cages and all these other additives that we can add to the brain, which is our phone, can make our lives much easier when it comes to content creation and just capturing moments and being creative. But that's about it for me, guys. Let me know down below what you guys thought about the photos that I captured with the Moment T-Series lenses, if it's something that you would consider in the future, if you own Moment lenses, if you have some competitor lenses, um, about everything, about the Luminar Neo, uh, what do you think about AI and photo editing? I'm really curious to know you guys' opinion because we've talked about this in the past, uh, but this is a good, you know, venue for us to fully explore those conversations. Uh, but it's been a pleasure as usual. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay fresh. Peace.